You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast. And uh, right now we're talking about the newly sworn in ministers. All of them uh, hit the ground running, as it were, in their various ministries, places where agog. Everybody was welcoming everybody else. Uh, we've seen the minister for the FCT, or minister of uh, FCT, Nyesom Wike, saying that he will, he will bring so many uh, buildings down. As long as they are distorting the master plan of Abuja, he will bring them down. He will step on toes. He will do this and that. We've heard the minister of uh, humanitarian affairs, Beta Edu, saying that she was going to lift uh, 130 million Nigerians out of poverty. How she's going to do that, we're yet to find out. We have also heard uh, from the Minister of Power, who is promising us that he's going to make sure that power is more steady. I do hope it's not a deja vu uh, from the person that said that it wouldn't take more than six months to uh, make sure light is steady in Nigeria. We have also heard from uh, the Minister of Solid Minerals who said that the President sent him there because of diversity, that he is the right man to do that. And so many of them, all of them in fact, are saying that there, was, there is going to be a new lease of life because they are in charge. We're being joined this morning by Mr. Nick Agule, a public affairs analyst, to look into uh, the words of these ministers and how practicable are some of the solutions that they intend to bring. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Agule. Uh, good morning and good morning to our viewers. Okay, they say they have hit the ground running. Uh, we do hope that they have not hit the ground running their mouths, but they can also do what the needful is. You have seen all that the ministers have said they were going to do. would like to hear your thoughts on whatever they have promised us. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, before going into the specifics, I would like to make a general comment. And the general comment centers around implementation of government policy through the promises that have been made. Nigeria is, Nigeria will be 63 years old this year. And from the First Republic through to the military era, to the Second Republic through the military era, and now in the third republic our leaders always make promises to us in fact a budget is a statement of promises and every year we have this budget with promises embedded in them when a new leader takes office he makes promises in fact even before he takes office he makes promises during the campaigns and then when he takes office, he makes promises. And when he appoints those who will help him to govern, either as ministers or commissioners, uh, they make promises. But what we have seen so far in Nigeria is that these promises are not translating into reality. So my general comment and charge to President Tinubu, his ministers, and the governors and their commissioners in all states of the Federation is that please transform your promises into action. Let us see your hand in terms of what you are doing, not what you are saying only. If I will use a common Nigerian balance, now promises we go chop. We don't hear promises. Tire. When are promises going to translate into action? Every government will say, we will provide stable electricity, for instance. And Nigeria's electricity has remained 3,000 megawatts for 63 years. It doesn't make sense. So your promises are actually not having any value. If they are not going to be transformed. So that my, that's my first general statement. My second general statement is that every year we have budget. <clears throat> like the federal government this year has budgeted 21 trillion naira. 
even though if you look at it critically translated to dollars it is really not big money but at least let us see on the ground what 21 trillion can do there is too much corruption in government circles and this corruption is embedded in the civil service of nigeria at all levels ministers have come in with fresh blood as you can see they cannot wait to start they are really geared for the job but as they sit on their seats today the permanent secretaries the directors in their various ministries are now bringing files to their tables and telling them how money can be made out of those files and ministers get sucked into this and corruption can no longer be termed. So my second general uh, uh, comment is that let the ministers call the bluff of the civil service of Nigeria. Let them be focused on Nigerians and delivering the dividends of democracy to the long-suffering people of Nigeria. As those files are coming, with civil servants pointing out where money can be made, they should just tell them to go and sit down back on their seats so that the, the business of governance in Nigeria can happen at least for once. So those are my two opening statements as regards the agenda for the new cabinet of President Tinubu. Yeah, but the they, they, uh, civil servants are like the godfathers in politics. Uh, because the godfathers, a lot of people beat their chest and say, I'm going to retire all the godfathers, and at the end of the day, uh, they are not able to do this. Uh, is it possible for the ministers to work without the uh, civil service as it is, 100% of the civil service? Is it possible to succeed without them? So, it is impossible for the ministers or commissioners at the subnational government level to succeed without the civil service. It is impossible. So that is the reality. Without the civil service, government policy can never be implemented because the structures to implement them will not be there. But the civil servants are looking at the body language of the minister or commissioner at the state level, as it, as it may be. If the body language of the minister is that I am not interested in all these shenanigans, I don't want to make money through all these files you are bringing it to me. I just want to get this job done. If it is a water project, I want to get the job done. I want to see that water truly done for this community so that they can have water, which is actually the liquid of life. The civil servants, by seeing such stance by the ministers, we advise themselves that the game has changed. And if, as we say, the drum beats have changed and you, your dance steps have not changed, you will soon discover that you are not part of the dance. So it is about the 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 the, the um, it is about what the ministers who have now entered office are going to do. Are they going to offer themselves to the civil service to be sucked into the corrupt bureaucracy we have? Or are they going to stand aloof and say, I am not interested in your dirty dealings. I have come here to deliver for Nigerians. And I can tell you, if the civil servants see that the ministers have come to do the work, the civil servants we align with the minister and they will deliver. And let me tell you one thing. What I have said now at the ministerial level also applies at the presidential level. These 45 ministers that have been, uh, you know, inaugurated into office. If, for instance, a minister receives all these files from the civil servants and the files contain ways to make money out of the system, and the minister takes these files to the president. And the president says, my friend, is that what I appointed you to do? That you will come to me and you will be 
system will suck money that is meant to provide healthcare, education, infrastructure, electricity, all that for Nigerians? Do you know that that minister will go back to his office and tell the civil servants that, I don't want trouble, please go back. Go back. Go and bring me stuff that will work for Nigerians. So the change actually must start at the presidency. The president is the one who has been entrusted with power by Nigerians. It is the direction that he will face, that his ministers will face. And it is the direction that his ministers will face, that the civil service will face. So change must start at the top, very top. I hear people who say, change begins with me. Change must start at the bottom. Look, change is better started at the top. If you go to a family and the father is a rogue, the mother is a rogue, and you want the children to start changing that family, is that going to be possible? So this message has to start right from the top to say, we have to do things differently. This is a different Nigeria, and we want to deliver for the people of Nigeria. So that is just the way this thing is going to be. Mm. Uh, but in a, in a uh, just just very fast now because we have run out of time. Sorry that uh, it started a bit late. Just uh, in a in a country where the civil service seems to be like uh, the be all, uh, we just had a story of directors over five hundred directors refusing to retire. Uh, it's because they know that they have strength. They they know that uh, nothing can happen to them as it were. Uh, do you think the politicians can uh, succeed even if they they give what kind of body language that they want to give? Politicians can succeed. President Tinubu is not only the president of Nigeria. He's also the commander in chief of the armed forces of Nigeria. That means if he gives command to any of the military chiefs, they will implement it. If he gives a command to the police inspector general, he will implement it. If he gives a command to the attorney general of Nigeria, he will implement it. So if President Tinubu says, do this, and people don't do it, consequence management has to come in. You see, I keep saying this thing. President Tinubu only needs to have a single point agenda. One single point agenda. And that one single point agenda should be rule of law, law enforcement. Once he's able to implement that single point agenda, every other thing will be added onto Nigeria. You know, so the rule of law means bring everybody, whoever they are, bring everybody, including the president, the vice president, his ministers, governors, everybody, traditional rulers in Nigeria, the big men, the billionaires, bring them equally before the law. And I say this thing that those places where our okay. young people are running to, they are jackpying to. They are to. not jackpying to a better country than Nigeria. Yeah. They are jackpying to a country that has rule of law we have to, as the main agenda for government. To and that is what point, President Chinubu needs to implement. Yes, we have to drop it at this point, Nick. Uh, sorry that the time has run out. We'd like to thank you. Uh, maybe this is a discussion that will continue some other time. Thank you for your time today. Please continue this discussion some other time so yes. that we can look into the agenda yes. of each of the ministers as they are saying it Yes, now. definitely. Thank you for today. Okay, that was Nika Gule, a public affairs analyst. And today we leave you with this quotation, or quote rather, not quotation. Education is the key that unlocks the golden door to freedom. That's according to George Washington Carver. Uh, education is a key that unlocks the golden door to freedom. We do hope that you can have that freedom and may it work for you and our country. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow.